Hello, I'm Richard Voves, the Bald Explorer, and I'm out on another investigation. I've come to the wonderful village of Cheriton in Hampshire, famed for watercress and something else. And trout. Oh, and trout, that's right, and trout. <laughs> and I'm joined today, my very special guest is Julian Humphreys, who's a great friend of mine, but he's also uh, from the Battlefield Trust. He's basically an expert on the battles of Britain. Hello, Julian. Hi there, Richard. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much for uh, coming along on the show. We're standing by a war memorial. This is, what, from the Great War? Yes. I think. But we are going back further in time to look at a battlefield and a battle that took place, well, during the English Civil War. That's right, in, in 1644. So it's about 18 months into the Civil War. You know, that war between the King on one side and most of Parliament on the other. Yes. And, uh, you know, it would go on for considerable amount of time after this but this is kind of significant this battle because it was parliament's first big victory in the civil war uh-huh. uh, up until then the royalists had kind of won most of the battles and uh, after this i think the parliamentarians thought hey we can do this so battle took place here we're in this wonderful village so just within the background the lovely chimes so if you can hear that arrange that did you <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go on a bit of a stroll and look around this battlefield so no fighting here as such, but no. were, were troops based here? Yes, they were. I think that there, were, that there was a certain amount of skirmishing here, but most of the fighting was up on the high ground just behind the, um, right. the village, which is where we're going to go and walk now, I think. So let's go through these wonderful thatched cottages and houses and get up there and, and find out more about it. Let's do it. Come out of Cheriton now, yeah, Julian. So, so we're heading up. Where are we going? Well, we're heading out of Cheriton up, up the hill, really. So we're heading north of the, of the village, and we're going up onto some high ground where the Roundheads, where the Parliamentarians were formed up, and you get a really good view of the of the battlefield because it, it sort of sweeps on down below you and up on the other on the far side where the where the Royalists were. And at this stage of the the uh, the, the overall battle, people are still very much concerned with what's going on it's still brother against brother and a bit uh, a bit like the recent uh, brexit debate where people are they don't really want to fight each other do they no at this uh, at this stage for, for a lot of the of the civil war the early early months there was a real effort to remain neutral but the reality of things is you, you that once things start kicking off it's very difficult to remain neutral and if somebody turns up and said if you're not for us you're against us You've got to make a decision. Yes. And actually the two commanders here, so Ralph Hopton, who was the Royalist, and um, William Waller, the Parliamentarian, they were friends, really close friends. Um, and yet they found themselves on uh, opposing sides in the, in the fighting here. Waller very famously described the Civil War as this war without an enemy, which I think is uh, quite a good uh, way of putting it, isn't it? Wow. That's a stunning view. It's great, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't that amazing? We've just come up the hill. It's not a huge hill, but you know, I've had just had a cold, so I'm a bit out of breath. Carried the gear up here. What would the parliamentarians who have here been carrying? Because you can't just come up and start fighting. No, you can't. We've got to have their weapons of war. So a lot of them would have had muskets, great big heavy wooden things that right. they had in those days. Not very accurate, which is why everybody all fired at once, because, in the you know, if a hundred shot, maybe two people would hit the target. But <laughs> well, they think that was good. Yeah. Oh, wow, great effect. Right. Know? And then if it was time for fighting with them, they didn't have bayonets at this stage, you know, the things you stick on yes. the end of the barrel. So you turn the musket round, you belt somebody. <laughs> we say rather euphemistically called giving somebody a dry blow oh right because it bleeds you see yes, so that, yes. so that, and then you've got pikemen yes um, who were like the muscle of the of a regiment and they had long spears about 16 foot yes. long and they would sort of ward off cavalry and protect the musketeers because it took a long time to load those muskets took a long time to and did they know, have guns the sort of um, the guns on wheels that yes they, they did both sides had um, had light guns which they kind of rolled up here yeah. they fired mainly cannonballs right which didn't blow up but they bounced along until they hit somebody <laughs> right Ooh, then it was bad yes, you know? yes or at close range case shot which was like turning the gun into a giant shotgun right so lots of bits of bits metal and it yes. would blast out horrible you know in, in that way so that was your foot soldiers and your guns 
cavalry yes. as well. So these are, the parliamentarians are here and across yeah. the valley on where the tree line is, that's where the royalists were, is that right? That's right. So we've got a valley that, that, that it's like a horseshoe really yeah. and you can and that high ground over on the on the far side, that was where the royalists were. They're coming really Behind them, they've got Alsford, Winchester, Basing House, which right. were royalist centres. So, parliamentarians in that direction, down to Portsmouth, Southampton, which are parliamentarian centres. Right. So this was very much in, in March 1644. It was like the front line, really. The oh, royalists see. had come up from the southwest. Yep. Parliamentarians held the southeast. And so this found itself propelled into the centre of hostilities. And briefly. how many men are we talking well, about? We're talking about, I don't know, six, 7,000 aside. So, but 15,000 people. Yes. When you think that somewhere like Winchester wouldn't have had anything like that number of people. So it was, a, it was like a couple of mobile, very unhealthy towns wandering around, wasn't right. it, really? Yes, you know, with absolutely. all their diseases and illnesses and what so, have you. Now, we have the image, this very fanciful image of what each side looked like. You know, cavaliers, round heads. We have all that with the hats and the mm. feathers and all of that. Was it like that? Avast there, thou round head dog. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, it wasn't. It wasn't. I mean, you know, in that image, you, you know, it's uh, the, the as you say, the, the cavaliers with their flowery hats and yeah. the parliamentarians with their helmets. But I guess if you think about it, if you're going into battle, um, and you've got a choice between a helmet, yes, and a hat with a feather in it, yes. what are you going to go for? You know, and in Absolutely. fact, both sides looked exactly the same. So how did they tell each other apart? Well, there, there were uniforms to a point. In that, for example, on the parliamentarian side, there was a uniform. There was a regiment of blue-coated chats. But there also was on the royalist side. Right. So you've got to find ways of telling each other apart. And one of the ways they did it was through what they called field words, which was like a password. Right. And so the royalists would all shout, you know, it might be for king and parliament or victory without cause. You all shouted it out. Because yes. the other side then knew what it was immediately. But it was a start, you know. So at this battle, well, the, the parliamentarians thought, well, God's on our side. So we'll have the password, uh, the field word, God with us. And the royalists over on the other side of the, of the valley thought, well, God's on our side, isn't he? He's a royalist. So we'll have the password, God with us. So they had to go away and think again after uh. that. you know. But they also had a thing called a, a, a field work, a field sign. Right. And that could be just something that you did to dis- differentiate yourself from the other side. So at one battle at Newbury, the royalists all fought with their shirts out. Oh, right. Oh, okay. Or at other battles, you might take a bit of, you know, a bit of green and stick it in your hat. And that right. would be the way of, of telling. At this battle, the royalists decided they'd all wear something white, a bit of white cloth or a bit of white rag. Right, right which makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And the parliamentarians thought, we'll all wear something white. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so, they, so they got off to a bit of a confused start. Yeah. But I think these battles really were very confused. You, yes. If some bloke was coming towards you, and he wouldn't know whose side he was on until he shot at you, I suppose, yes. really. But even then he might have shot at you by he mistake. might be shooting yeah. at his own side. Yeah, Gosh. so very, very confused. And the, and the sides were, were looked alike. And really they were alike, you know. It wasn't like aristocracy versus peasantry no. or merchants versus gentry. Yes. You had bits of both on, on both sides. So it really did divide the country right down the middle. Gosh. Mm. So how do we know, Julian, that it was here? Um, Because, you know, a field is a field is a field and it could be anywhere, couldn't it? Well, there's been a lot of of research on this particular battle and there's actually been quite a lot of controversy and people have put the battle in the fields over here, for example. Right. Other people have said it was further to to the north and so on. But I think now we probably know pretty much for sure that the battle was fought in this particular area for a number of reasons. Yeah. I mean, look, the first thing to say is that there are a lot of count, other counts written about it right. on both sides. And, and if they say, you know, well, we were drawn up on a hill with a wood on one side or whatever, you start looking for that yes. on, 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 on the battlefield. You have to be a bit careful with the accounts, though, because they didn't necessarily know what they were talking about. And sometimes they deliberately wanted to mislead. It's about trying to, like, like trying to understand. Really. Yeah, it's like trying to understand politics today through the newspapers. You yes. know, they all have a particular angle, don't right. they? Right. The accounts are, are flawed, so you have to sort of balance them against each other. And if they sort of, if the royalists say we retreated up here, and the parliamentarians say we pursued them up there, the chances are it happened. And then you, what you can do is you can look at what the landscape was like, because this has changed a bit. I mean, it's a lovely place to walk, and it's in general character it's 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 the same but most of these hedges etc are, are relatively recent hedges yeah. so the hedges that were around at the at the time were slightly different but fortunately we've got maps and 
well, at least we got information about what it was like because a lot, a lot of information was kept just by chance about this area. And then there's metal detecting. Ah, yes. Now, that's me- a, an interesting thing. <laughs> yeah, well, metal detecting is great because it does uncover things. But the thing is, once it's uncovered, that's it. Yes. So it's so important, I think, that if there is metal detecting done, it's done through a proper archaeological project. And in fact, we work with Winchester University here, training them on how to do it, the, the archaeologists. What you don't really want is somebody turning up and sort of going somewhere, finding a load of stuff, putting it on eBay, because it, it takes that stuff out of its context. Yes. And also, you don't then know how relevant what's left is. So we've got a much better advantage here of the hill and the woods. Yeah, I think so. On the other mm. side. Well, they're quite important because whoever controlled those woods sort of controlled the battlefield. Because, right. you know, as you can see, you can shoot all the way down through the... Well, you're on fields. high ground. And yes. also you can be hidden. Yes. And uh, anybody coming down through that valley is, is a bit exposed to right. the chaps hiding in there, shooting, maybe moving a gun up there. And uh, the parliamentarians nabbed it first of all. They got up early, really, and right. got there. But the royalists then sent a force down. They recaptured it. And that gave them, for the first half of the battle anyway, an advantage because they had their high ground and they also had that wood. Let's go onto the opposite side and see what it was like for the cavaliers. Yeah. This is a, a well-rutted path, isn't it? Yeah, it's a very ancient road, this. Hedges either side. I guess hedges would have been important. Well, yeah, because they kind of constrain the way that an army could advance or a regiment could advance. Imagine, say, 300 horsemen coming down here. It's going yeah. to be a bit of a traffic jam, isn't it? Yes, and then it is. how do they deploy out of the field? So they really had an impact on the battle, I think. Right. Ah. So this is the uh, memorial stone then? Yes it is, so this was put up in about 1975 I think it was and we're over on the royalist side of the Right, so the battlefield behind us and Absolutely. that's the wood we've that's been looking famous at. Famous wood, yes. Yeah. So, and presumably the royalists, same sort of thing, they've got all the similar sort of equipment dressed as we spoke before and then the battle ensues, how does that play out? Well, the Royalists managed to capture the wood over here, and that gives yeah. them a bit of an advantage. Yeah. And they're slightly outnumbered, and they decide that the, their plan is going to be that they'll go on the defensive, to sort of wait and see, really, see right. what the parliamentarians are so, going to so do. let the parliamentarians... Come on to them yeah. at a disadvantage. But it doesn't go to plan, because one group of Royalists, we don't know why, but they suddenly take it on themselves to kind of launch an attack on their own. Oh. So whoever is here, they say, what are they doing over there? Right. It's terrible. So they get cut off. And then the Royalists think, well, in for a penny, in for a pound. And for the rest of the day, they launch these attacks up these hills that we can see behind us here. Yes. They've got lots of cavalry armed with, uh, you know, swords and pistols. But it's difficult to get horses around in this, uh, right. in this terrain. You need big open fields, don't you? And of course, you said before that although we've got big fields here mm. with the hedges, they were much smaller That's back right. in the day. Yeah, so it was, they were disorganised attacks. And essentially, they attacked all day until they ran out of steam. And then the parliamentarians went on the counter-attack. They retook the woods. They worked round through Cheriton village. And the royalists just had to retreat. Right. So they fell back along the, uh, the road that we see here and a couple of the other tracks back to Alsford, through Alsford, which they set a light to oh, uh, right. in order to, to hamper the pursuit because, you know, it's all half-timbered buildings, etc. So, bad news for Alsford, really. Yes. So how significant this little battle was it in the great scheme of the English civil wars? Well, it was kind of significant because it was the first great parliamentarian victory, so it gave them a lot, a lot of confidence. Right. But it took another two years, really, before the, the, the civil war was, was ended and Parliament eventually won. Um, but at that stage, nobody was thinking about executing the king. No. You know, and, and, and Oliver Cromwell was not even the leader of the parliamentarians at this stage. That would come later. But the king proved so untrustworthy that a bit later he started off a second civil war, which caused more damage. And it was yes. after that that the decision was taken amongst the parliamentarians that, that he had to go and he was executed in January 1649. But as I say, five years before that, when we were here, neither side, royalist nor parliamentarian, would have thought that that was even possible. This whole area is incredibly peaceful now, and it's hard to believe that such violence know, took place. Absolutely. But it's all walkable. It is. It's, it, the, the access here is, is great. There's so many paths, aren't there? We've yeah. been over a lot of them. And it's a, a lovely place to walk. And, I, and, and you know, it's, it, it's important, I think, to preserve it because not only is it beautiful, but it helps you understand the, the fighting. But also, there's a sort of memorial here, isn't there? Because yes. this is where our ancestors, our relatives... 
you know, almost certainly, yes. you know, fought and died in these fields. And I think we need to sort of remember that. Yes. And uh, for that, that reason alone, I think that we need to value and, and, uh, and preserve these places. Well, Julian, it's been an absolute joy mm. to um, come and do all this. Thank you very much. Of course, the Battlefield Trust is a wealth of knowledge mm. with maps and information on all the battles, not just the English Civil War, but m many, many battles and the battlefields. Mm. Um, and, and that's what you are part of. Um, and, w and I'll put the link, obviously, in the description, so do mm. check that out. That mm. would be great. Will you, at some point, get, do another one with me? I'd, I'd love to. It yes, there are many fun. places we, we, we could go. I'd, I'd love to. Yeah. I always enjoyed looking at your videos. Nice yeah. to be part of one. Absolutely. Mm. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, do check out the Battlefields Trust. Julian also does heritage tours. Don't you take people out and all mm. that? Um, and if you send me a link, I'll shove that up there if people want to get involved. But in the meantime, thank you for watching. Don't forget to follow. Give us a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. It really does help. Become a patron, support what I do. And if you've got a comment, if you've been here or you've got something to add or you've got an ancestor, a lot of people do get in touch and say, oh, I've had an ancestor yeah. who fought in that. It'd be fascinating. It would. Absolutely. But from uh, Julian and I here at uh, the Cheriton site of the English Civil War battle, thanks for watching and bye-bye. 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 <laughs>